Alright guys, so I'm back at again in the fucking video. Alright guys, so we're gonna continue off, I guess, the mystery uh, iceberg. Uh, I've been reading some of the entries uh, just recently, and they're pretty good. So fucking doozy, guys. Alright, so, enjoy. Creeping livers. Uh, this entry's kinda weird. It sends you, when you click on the, I guess, the, the link for this thing, it sends you to a website called Angel Fire, and essentially just a bunch of stories, like little mini stories are just pull out from like fucking random they're all random as hell like fucking the first story is like about women that like, gets like hit by a bunch of cars like her body just becomes like fucking almost like nothing the i guess people that find her she's pretty much like in pieces but small pieces her thumbs flat like cartoonish looking and then like the second story is about like some lady getting struck by lightning but she doesn't even recognize it and it's pretty odd and then like the third story which is the one this one's talking about is like i guess someone talking about like placing a liver, I guess, <laughs> on a table next to a glass of milk, and then like leaving it for like 45 uh, minutes, I guess, just leaving it and just like going away for a while, and then coming back to it and seeing like the liver just fucking, like seemingly crawls next to the fucking milk. I'm saying I'm not saying like they came back to it and see they see that fucking thing crawling, but they c you can see that the thing moved, like places, and that's pretty about it. Cosmic systems for robotizing humans. So, this one's kind of odd. I'm not sure if it's referring to, I guess, the book, The Cosmic Question by John Keel. Or, I guess, some kind of, I guess, I'm not sure what this is. Some kind of scientific study on, well, I guess from Kumar. I don't know. I'm not kind of sure how to pronounce his first name, but, uh, Astutosh? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher everyone's fucking names. But, the journal thing he makes, it's called The Idea of Cosmic Robotics. And it's pretty much talking about how... We can get cosmic energy from, I guess, you know, space, and kind of make, I guess, human uh, AI intelligence. Kind of just make robots from that. But, correct me guys if I'm wrong, but that's what I got from this. Jesus was a mushroom. So this one's talking about, I guess, when you enter the links, <coughs> it sends you to like a weird, like, post uh, thread forum. And it talks about how there's, like, a link with, like, <laughs> psychedelics and, like, religion. Uh, for the most part, it just says that... Uh, most of the experiences are just like, well, not our experiences, but the, I guess, I mean, like religions are created solely from like just ideas created on psychedelics. So, I guess, like doing shrooms and just <laughs> doing drugs. It's, it's a pretty interesting read. The people down here are pretty nice and cool. Professor Oak Sightings. So, if you don't know who this is, this is essentially, I guess, a character you talk to in the Pokemon games, like early in the game. Someone like depends on your Pokeballs, you know, I uh, like a jazz. You already know who the fuck this is. But. I guess the story that this entry links you to is like, I guess some kind of personal story by like some kid. Well, it's some guy talking when he was like a kid, but so he's with his friend and during the summertime they go to some abandoned school. No, it's not abandoned, but you know, yeah, summertime there's no fucking school going on, so they go to the school. And then uh, I guess at six a. I mean not six a.m. six p.m. Fucking two, not two, but two people come out of a van, and they just like. I guess do a test on these two boys, and then for fucking no odd reason, fucking Professor Oak comes out of the van too. So like, what the fuck? <laughs> and the <laughs> the story is pretty odd. It just says like this fucker comes out, and they don't really go too much in detail what happens, like what else. But it's just kind of mind-boggling. Like fucking the real Professor Oak came out of nowhere, and that's about it. The story talks about like you know the recent events, like during the time. of... Oh, I guess, I think it was a Burger King introduced, like, those Pokeballs, and I think children were, like, choking on those things. And the epilepsy thing you guys already know about with Pokemon. And that's pretty much about it. Bioengineered deep sea oil rig workers. So this entry sends you to, I guess, like, a clip of a, a thread post. And it's pretty weird. Like, it just shows you, like, some weird-ass pictures. They're really blurry. I'll, send you, I'll show you guys right here, but... I'm going to read this just to explain to you guys what's going on. So, the guy says, There are modified humans working on the oil rig in the abysmal zones of the deep sea. I've seen them all. Uh, no one is meant to talk about it. They live in mechanical uh, shells like barnacles inside their body. Or is it just a blob with limbs that pop out of fixed lines and do tasks? They are bioengineered to live um, under there to withstand the immense pressure of the deep sea. No one is supposed to talk about it, but we all seen it. So yeah, it's French about it, about <laughs> biomechanical 
I guess, sea slugs that work. That are like humans, I guess, according to the picture. But there's, there's nothing else on this. It's just, just this. It's fucking weird. But, I don't know, it's pretty interesting though. Head transplant runaways. So I couldn't find any links on this because uh, I guess the fucking iceberg doesn't show you any links or give you any other ideas or in the comments don't say anything. But from my scene, there's like three stories. It's like a story of some guy, like a 30 year old, I mean, 30, 33 year old um, old man suffering from some kind of disease and he volunteered for a head transplant. That doesn't really like, say anything about the runaway bullshit. But there's another story of some Russian guy who also suffers from disease and he volunteers for, I guess, a head transplant. Uh, nothing else goes from that. And there's another story where some guy, well, I mean, it's not a guy, but, uh, some, someone claiming that the head transplant can, hasn't ever been done. But then it says, like, someone's done it or something like that, but, I don't know. <laughs> and there's some other story that doesn't say anybody, like, at all, but, it says someone canceled, like, midway, like, their head transplant, so maybe that's what it's talking about, but it doesn't mention, like, who and what, or any names. But if you guys can help me out, uh, please do in the comments what I'm missing. Revenge of the Crystal. So this one's just another one with, I guess, you know, the boy, <laughs> uh, Gene, I, I can't say his last name, um, Billards or Billards? I'm gonna just say Billards. And this is just like another uh, interview made about the, I guess, the Revenge of the Crystal, like a little, I guess, small eh, perspective on, I guess, <clears throat> the meaning of art, theater, you know, represent representation of like, ideas. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. Fear aspires genetic memory of time when giant <laughs> arachnids dominated humans. So this is just an entry, I guess, on a book from, you know, John Keel again. The book is called Strange Creatures from Time and Space. I mean, what the fuck? I'm saying this wrong. The The book is called, uh, fucking, The Complete Guide to Mysteries. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, <laughs> I got that wrong. I was reading something else, but... Uh, so essentially, I think on page 18, if you're on the PDF of it, but page on 18... He talks about, I guess, fossilized, you know, evidence of, uh, big fucking spiders and scorpions from way back when in, like, fucking 350 million years, like, ago. And he just pretty much just talks about that, and then, I don't know, if you guys are interested, the book's pretty good. But it talks about, like, a bunch of, like, different times and places of, like, different kinds of animals that, um, John has, um, gone through. Well, I mean, uh, you know, discovered and looked through and researched. It's pretty interesting to read. Hospitals send people to hell. So when I tried clicking on the links for these things, it sent me to another iceberg that had like no information on this. So I kind of had to dig on my own. And all I kept finding was like a bunch of Reddit posts of like people kind of speculating, doing theories of like, I guess one of them I found was fucking through r slash fan theories. And it says how I guess the hospital could be symbolized like be like a a purgatory in a sense. And a lot of people just conjure up it to be like, well, they just bring up saying like, yeah, it's close related to like purgatory in a sense because like people are getting hurt and tortured. I guess not hurt and tortured, but you know when they're dying, like it's kind of a sense of like torture and like, I don't know, it's kind of weird interrelated like with purgatory. It's pretty like kind of like ah, like what the fuck, but that's pretty much what this is talking about. Well, from what I got, I don't know if I'm wrong, guys, let me know because I couldn't find the link for this thing. So help me out, guys. The internet is a parasitic egregore. So when you click on the links for these things, I guess <laughs> this is what she's talking about. It's like a, some kind of theory some guy made up on some thread post. Or I guess the internet could be perceived as like a kind of entity that like comforts you, I guess. It pretty much satisfies all your, your I guess, your needs. And it's kind of, it fills up a lot of gaps. Like saying like, I guess, uh, I'm gonna fucking blurt out here, but you know the... P O R N, you know, you know what that is. <laughs> uh, it satisfies that. Let's see, memes are just a way to, I guess, a way of coping and platonic uh, communication, or I guess, for group bonding. It's like a half, uh, not a full contact way of making, uh, I guess, some kind of bond. And some other ways, like saying how, uh, I guess, the internet's considered like a mother, I guess. You could say that's the way it's like, well, the way Contrap is like an entity. It just fulfills your needs and, uh, I guess what your wants, I guess, in a sense. And that's pretty about it. Hyperstitions. So essentially, a group called the CCRU uh, created this idea called hyperstition. And essentially what that is, is like, uh, I guess an idea that brings, up, brings itself like from the past 
and somehow it becomes you know a reality in, in the future. The example they give about this is uh, I guess in the back in the days, I guess the term cyberspace created by you know William Gibson in 1984 and novel of his. You could say that in the future that concept will be I guess real later on. And that's pretty much just about it. That's all that's what's going on. Dreams of astronauts in space are highly classified. So this entry is about, I guess, an author called uh, J.G. Um, Bullard. And he's pretty much doing an interview with, I guess, a magazine called Second. And this is, like, done in 1996. And it's a, it's a pretty interesting interview. Like, the, the response he gives out is pretty interesting. Like, it, they give out a bunch of, like, weird responses. Like, hey, what do you think of the space and, like, this and, like, some crazy-ass shit. It's, it's pretty interesting to read, but... Um, this little entry, pretty much on this point on the, I guess on the interview, he talks about how NASA <laughs> is pretty much like telling astronauts to shut the fuck up when they re they talk about like spacing dreams. Uh, Bullard essentially says, uh, not Bullard, but Bullard pretty much says like how they're forced to like shut up <laughs> and to not say anything about it, or even like a case with like Armstrong, while he became pretty much uh, I guess. Uh, teacher and he was like always trying to get interviews by people but he was done denied them saying oh hell no, I'm not doing this shit but that's pretty much about it gang stalking is a performance art so this is like a story you click on on the link it's like a gaslighting <laughs> situation story where some guy from her says like for 48 years uh, with experience with his mom where like she's gonna <laughs> she's fucking delusional throughout his entire fucking life with her and like he pretty much describes a bunch of situations where like she's fucking going crazy or like she thinks that fucking someone's banging on her fucking house someone's graffitiing her fucking her house <laughs> doing a bunch of bad stuff but like I don't know she's delusional like no nothing's going on like they uh, I guess the author I guess has proven through security cameras and uh, motion detectors and like that she's just straight up delusional but she keeps on denying it and like She's just straight up delusional crazy, dude. And pretty much this guy just talks about like all these experiences. That's about it. It's a pretty long read. I think it's kind of like, it's kind of sad, honestly, because just the negative stuff. Like, it's just her batting out on him. It, it kind of sucks, but that's pretty much what this entry is about. Apollo 11 landed on the wrong moon. So this one's, this one's fucking dope as hell, guys. This one leads to like a video. Some kind of conspiracy theorist guy. This guy is wild and crazy, guys. Like, this guy throws a shit ton of things out the window. Like, it's fucking crazy. This guy, like, thinks outside the box like crazy. So, essentially, what, from what I got of it, like, I haven't seen, like, I mean, I don't, I don't completely understand it because a lot of shit's just, like, flips over your brain, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, essentially, what it's saying, I guess, for our, our context, is that we are on the moon, so technically, our Earth is the moon, and like we never had a moon. It's it's kind of it's kind of weird. I don't, I don't really understand myself, but from what I got is that <laughs> we landed a fucking uh, I guess space shuttle onto another crater on our moon, but we are the moon. Like Earth is the moon, and like essentially, I guess the sun also fucking heats like a fucking ray of heat. Well, I guess a uh, ray of light. I guess into one of the craters and creates a reflection of a uh, I guess a planet that looks like earth I guess and we I guess you know <laughs> we fucking decided to go to the reflection of that weird planet I don't know this is a bunch of like <laughs> crazy theorist territory but it's just crazy if you guys want look at the video it's just fucking awesome like it, it's just cool to look at it's fucking like damn what the fuck is going on here Skull and brain are parasites. Uh, F7. Fuck, I can't really say that word fucking word, but theory, I guess. You, you know what I'm trying to say, guys. But, I'm uh, sorry to make it to you guys, but this one's kind of locked behind a book at the buy. Uh, I can't, you know, I don't <laughs> I can't buy it right now. Sorry to say you guys, but if you guys help me out on Patreon, I could probably buy it, but. Uh, I couldn't find much else on the internet about this, besides, you know, it's locked behind a book that I can't look at. Or I tried looking through a summary, but online, but couldn't find jack shit. So, if you guys can, you know, pony up the dough, help a brother out, you know what I'm saying? I could probably get that shit done, but nah, I couldn't get the other guys, I'm sorry. 
Maybe, maybe if someone in the comments could, I guess, tell me what this is talking about, but I don't know. That's pretty about it. And there you have it, guys. That's pretty much, like, I guess, the 18th tier, I guess, for this list. You know, I'm going to reverse. I'm not sure if you knew that by now, but it's going to reverse. Uh, if you guys, you know, I pretty much said the same bullshit at the time. Subscribe, you know, give a like, comment on the video, see if anything's wrong, or try to add in your, I guess, fillers for everything I, anything I missed. I would appreciate it, guys. Uh, I got some, you know, I'm starting to get a little small amount of viewers now. Some of my videos are getting like nothing, get like two or one or zero. <laughs> but, you know, I can take what I can get, you know what I'm saying? But I appreciate the people that watch this. I know someone, I think, liked the video, I think, which is freaking like, oh shit. Uh, and it wasn't me. I don't like my videos or even look at my videos because I'm afraid it might affect with the YouTube analytics. But you know, I appreciate you guys. I have a Patreon guy, just letting you guys know if you guys want to, you know, donate to me. But I don't know. I'll try to make the next one, you know, the, the tier 17, I guess. As soon as possible, but, you know, I'm working on it, guys. Uh, peace out, you guys.